All right, so in this video, we're gonna show you how to update your ExpressLRS equipment, transmitters and receivers, and basically show you why uh, this is one of the big advantages of ExpressLRS over Crossfire is the fact that you can update your receivers and do the, and actually don't have to do any binding because you can use the binding phrase feature and update everything uh, and do all the binding and all that connecting without having to remove any of the equipment from your bind and fly drones. So in the future, when um, bind and fly drones will come with Express LRS built in, you don't have to dig out the receiver, or look for the bind button or any of that kind of nonsense. You can just uh, plug into Betaflight or plug it into your computer and use the Betaflight pass-through feature to update the receiver, which you are going to have to do because um, one of the little gotchas that I ran to in my uh, beta FPV video is that the version of firmware that's on the beta FPV equipment doesn't match the ones on the Happy Model equipment, which is uh, stuff I got uh, about a month prior, and so I had much older firmware, and if the firmware versions don't match, they don't connect to each other. And that's a safety feature, so you don't have um, version mismatching problems and then random fail safes. That was a problem the R9 system was notoriously um, bad at having. So they won't have that problem. But because of that of this um, feature, to a uh, safety feature, you have to update your equipment. And so there's no way around that. Um, you have to learn how to do this. But it's not that hard. There's two, um, was it, well, there's two resources. This first is expresslrs.org website. This one is a must have resource that well, um, I'll just quickly go sh show you what this is. It has a as a quick start guide, getting started. It has um, information here about all of the different transmitter modules, preparing your radio, preparing your transmitter modules, all the different ones that are currently on the market right now. Uh, unfortunately, the beta FPV ones aren't in here; it hasn't been documented yet. But they are in the the configurator, which I'll show you shortly. But it's got all the equipment or at least it should have most of the up-to-date equipment that's currently out there. So here's all of the current transmitter modules, how to flash them. If you go into like, you know, uh, here's like the ghost one, you know, it tells, it tells you which targets to look for in the configurator. And it goes through step-by-step -step how to do all the updates. It's actually very straightforward. Some of the, you know, because of all the equipment's a little bit different, some are gonna be harder than others. Um, but like generally speaking, like the happy model equipment is going to be pretty straightforward. You can do it like, for example, via Wi-Fi. There's multiple different ways you can do updates, Wi-Fi, beta flight pass-through feature, USB, etc. It's going to vary by the different equipment. So this is a very good resource. Go in here. You can find pretty much everything, transmitters, receivers. Obviously the beta FPV stuff isn't in here yet, but it will be eventually. Um, so I would refer you to this, but I'll go back out to the home page here. And you want the first thing you want to do is download the configurator. You go here. Uh, the current version is 1.01. .01. This is the one that has the beta FPV targets, which I'll show you shortly. So um, scroll down. Obviously, you want to find the one for your computer. If you have a Mac, I think it's DMG. And then there's like uh, RPM is like Linux. And when you want to get is this one here for Windows. For most people, it's going to be this Express LRS Configurator 101EXE. Now, when you download it, it's going to uh, Windows uh, Defender Security, whatever, antivirus is going to complain that it's a virus. It's a false positive. It's not a real virus. Just allow it to download. And then when you run it, they'll complain, oh, this is a virus again. Uh, just you have to bypass that and say, okay, I understand that this is... Um, you know, well, not a virus, and uh, make, uh, you know, basically bypass the warning, and then go ahead and install it. So then, once you've completed the installation and you've run the program, it's going to look like this. So let's go to the. Um, this is the main page here. Looks like this, and you want to select the target that you want to flash. So this will have all of your equipment in here as of the current version 101. Of course, if you're watching this video in the future, it's probably gonna be, you know, 2.7 or something or whatever, right? Anyway, then this list will probably be a lot bigger because I know that I think iFlight is gonna be making some equipment so that maybe at that point, at some point, you know, in the future, that'll be in this list. But anyway, here's the beta FPV stuff. You have the 
receivers, which you can flash via beta flight pass through, which is basically you just, you connect up your flight controller with the receiver already properly connected to the flight controller, and then it'll use the beta flight pass through feature to access the bootloader on the receiver to update the firmware. You can either do that, or you can, there's another method called the UART, which is basically through a USB connection. And then there's uh, the TX, which is also via UART. And that's the actual USB connection that's on the bottom of the transmitter. The Wi-Fi targets are not here yet. I'm sure in configurator 1.0.2, it'll show up. Because I know that the beta FPV receivers have the ability to turn on the Wi-Fi radio and you can update them via Wi-Fi as well. But to be honest, the beta flight pass-through feature is gonna be the most reliable. I was updating my Happy Model receivers via Wi-Fi and on some occasions I had um, basically timeouts and so I had to flash it through the beta flight pass-through feature anyway. But if it's already properly installed in your drone connected to your flight controller, this should work and I think it works better than the Wi-Fi feature anyway. Anyway, that'll probably show up here at some point in the future. So there's the 2.4 gigahertz equipment, there's a 900 megahertz equipment, so you have receivers and then transmitter. And then of course you have all this DIY stuff here, um, different other different manufacturers, CE, FreeSky R9. Again, I would refer you to the, uh, uh, this website, expresslrs.org and go in here and find the equipment that you're looking for. If you're looking for specific information on how to flash, they'll cover pretty much in all, all the little details for the specific equipment that you wanna do. I'm just gonna go over this one example, the one that I'm gonna actually do, and I'm just gonna show you the full list. Uh, there's like Free Sky, Ghost, Happy Model, and then there's a Jumper, uh, Namino RC, and I think Neutron RC. So these are the current vendors right now that are offering some off-the-shelf equipment, but I'm gonna update uh, the receiver that is inside the HX115LR that I reviewed uh, last week. And that has a built-in 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS receiver. So I'm gonna be using this feature here, the uh, this target, the uh, 2400RX via Betaflight Passer, so you select that. And then these are the options that I've selected. Now, you're gonna have a binding phrase. The binding phrase has to match what's in the transmitter so that it'll just connect. And that's one of the features that I think is a game changer that you don't have to do any, press any bind buttons or anything like that like you do with Crossfire. It'll just connect when you power everything up. But these are the, these are the options I've selected. So the, the options have to match on the transmitter and on the receiver for these things to connect. If they are, if they don't match, then things are not going to work. So for example, the no sync on arm, if you click, if you hover over the little uh, question mark here, you know, it says here uh, for, you know, what what it's for. Basically when you, get, when you enable it, it's basically uh, uh, for people that want to be racing, you get the, the lowest latency by, by enabling that. But if you want a better connection for long range, you don't want to check that. So that's why I have that on. And then for the other options, you can just hover over here and you can explain, it'll explain, you know, what those are. I wanted the, I enabled the hybrid switches eight feature because I wanted three position switches. But if we do that, I think you get, um, it adds a little bit more latency, but I'm okay with that. And then of course I enable telemetry. That's, I think these two are disabled by default. So these are options and, you know, you can turn them on if you want, or you can turn them off. But of course, you know, it, whatever you flash to your transmitter has to also match here. So this is these are the options I've chosen. And then you wanna go down here and then connect up your flight controller to um, the computers. I'll do that right now. All right, so one way you can check to see what COM port it is, it looks like it's COM3, but you can double check in Betaflight Configurator and that's the COM port that showed up. So down here, select the COM port, and all I have to do is hit build and flash. So um, the first time you do this, it's gonna take some time, it's gotta download a bunch of libraries and stuff, and it's gonna compile some code, et cetera. Uh, it might take some time, um, probably several months. But after you've done this a few times, it'll go through this pretty quickly. And so the, so, you know, the, 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 the next few times you flash, 
a lot of this stuff will go, go by a lot quicker. It also depends on the speed of your computer as well, but for the most part, this is only gonna be really slow the, the first few times you do, then the, the next few times after that, things should go a lot faster. See, it's already writing the code on my uh, receiver that's built into that all-in-one fl uh, flight controller board. And you should, at the very end, see that it's successful, and then you're good. If you have a problem here where it says like, um, unable to connect or you have some sort of USB problem, uh, usually it's a USB driver issue. Uh, you'll have to resolve that. Um, probably I would recommend you going to the expresslrs.org website here and, and look at the frequently asked questions. They'll give you some ideas as to what might be, what might, what might be wrong there in terms of your USB ports. Usually, um, if you can connect through Betaflight Configurator, this will work. So I, have, I haven't had a problem where it would connect to Betaflight Configurator and not be able to work in Express LRS Configurator. So for the most part, it's worked for me, although I've heard a few stories from people where it didn't work, but I, I couldn't quite get an idea of why there's a difference. But you should, for the most part, this should be the result, and then you're done. Um, and that's it. You know, when, next time you turn on your uh, uh, flight controller with the receiver and your uh, transmitter, it will disconnect. So uh, you just turn the transmitter on first, power that up, and then power up your drone, and then it just connects. You don't have to, there's no, because the binding phrase is, well, it should be in both the transmitter and receiver already. They just connect and you're off and, off and running. So very, very fast and easy. Obviously, you know, the Express LRS configurator is great. It, it simplified a lot of this like sort of compiling and stuff that had to happen to get this working. Um, it does that all for you, it's kind of automated and it just works. So that's this, there's just this one example here of um, flashing one receiver. Some of the other receivers might be different. For example, if you're doing R9 receivers that you've done for the first time, you have to flash the bootloader on first. Again, consult that website, it explains what to do. But after you've put the bootloader on, the next time you update, you just have to do it through Betaflight pass-through and it, you don't have to do that. You don't have to flash bootloader one time, basically. And then at, the updates after that are gonna be just as easy as these off-the-shelf receivers. And, as like I said, um, as long as all the versions match and the settings match, it doesn't matter what vendor you use, whether it's Haptic Model, Beta FAV, or any future vendor, past, present, or future, they'll all connect and work with each other. And I've tested all this with all the uh, different ones I have. I've, I've tested with the R9 receivers I have, the Happy Model receivers, and the Beta, beta FAV receivers, all with the, all the different transmitters, they all connect fine. And they all work fine, they all work as they should. So, you know, for the most part, uh, I think that should answer all the questions in terms of like, you know, what was going on before in my previous video. And hopefully this will you know, be a, uh, a good starting point for you guys in terms of getting your equipment updated because um, fortunately or unfortunately, I guess, this is the way it is. This is the way Express LRS works. This is the way you have to do the updates. Um, there's no way around it. You have to do it. But once you get the hang of it and you do it, every time you update a new receiver, it's very fast and easy, as you've just seen here and everything just connects and just works, it's great. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. Got any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.